Hey there, friends. Jeff Fritz here. And I want to talk to you this time in this episode of C Sharp in the Cards about working with dates and times and time zones. This is, this is a really confusing topic that folks have a hard time with. And I'm going to show you how to do this the professional way with all the features that you need in C Sharp. Now, in the beginning, C Sharp many, many years ago had only date time types. You had to specify both a date and a time, and it was one value that you would store, and you would create values like this. My game night is on May 1st, 2024, and it starts at 1900 hours, uh, 7 p.m. to those of you used to the 12-hour clock. And then we can access parts of that date and time using properties like hour, minute, and second. And that's that's nice, that gets us somewhere, but there's also a minimum value and maximum value available out there. And you could define date times without a time and say something like this. Well, our, our next game is May 8th, 2024. And I can display that and show that. I'll execute this real quick. And you can see that it outputs some of these numbers, right? My my game time is on May 1st, 2024 at 1900 hours, 7 p.m. 19 is the hour, 0 minutes, 0 seconds, and then there's next week's game on the 8th of May. And my minimum value, you see, is, is actually January 1st, the year 1. And then the maximum value is the year uh, 9,999, and it's actually on December 31st at 23.59 and 59 seconds. So we, we've got a wide range of data that we can store in our date time type. And this is using the Gregorian calendar. There are other calendars that are supported that you can work with and you can configure inside of the date time type. I've got links to that inside the documentation if you need to go in and work with, say, say the Japanese calendar and some other calendars that are available out there. Now, you can also parse values that are keyed in that, that might be um, something you want to turn from a string into a date, like right here, May 1st, 2024, 7 p.m. And when I tell it to parse that value, c Sharp's going to do its best to try and figure out what that value is, and it does accurately turn it into May 1st, 2024 at 1900 hours. Okay. Nice, but we can also, if we have a, a date and time that it's not exactly going to pick up easily, we can use the parse exact method like this and pass in that string and then specify a format using capital M and lower D and some Y's and some H's and M's. There's formatting available right here on this link that you can click through and check out. Now, when I run this method, of course, it does properly give me that value, but I'm being a little bit more explicit about the formatting here. So make sure you download and check out all of this documentation. There's links just below here on YouTube and on the website, csharpinthecards.com. Now, if you're just working with only a date or only a time, there are now date and time only types where you can specify just the date part or just the time part that you want to work with. And it's a really simple syntax using the date only and time only types. And these will give you precision around just those values. And when we display those values here inside of our Jupyter Notebook, you see that I actually get all the pieces, all the properties of that date type and that time type. And I even get the ticks, right? And a tick is a measure of, of processor cycles that the uh, internal clock in .NET uses so that we have very precise time that it keeps. Now, we're talking primarily here about dates and times without a time zone. And that might be really good for you if you're maintaining records for, for a doctor's office or for a financial company that are all located in one area. You have one locale, everybody's in Springfield, and that's where we're working, so we don't really need to be concerned about different time zones and daylight savings time and all of that nonsense that gets really weird if you're working with something like 
scheduling. If you are working with scheduling types of operations where daylight savings time or sometimes called summertime, um, where that's being referenced and you need different time zones and, and geez, the, the change of laws for the various time zones when they start and stop historically are just an awful thing to track. .NET has those values embedded and managed in this type called date time offset. Now, date time offset, you can create by specifying and passing in an existing date time. So here, if I take my game night and I specify, well, that 1900 hours, that was a local time. It's, it's local for me here in Philadelphia. I can create a date time offset that specifies that it's local to me and start showing that information. And when we look at this, things are a little bit different. Check that out. So when I just say display game night, you, specifying that it's just the date time, no time zone information tracked, it's 7 p.m. But when I refer to and display the date time offset, it takes into account daylight savings time and my Eastern time zone. Now, Eastern time zone here in the States in standard time is a minus five hours from UTC. On May 1st, daylight savings time is in effect. And it's only minus four hours. So that's actually 2300 is actually UTC time for when my game night starts. So just looking at the date time offset will give you UTC time. Okay. Now, if we dig in a little bit further and we say, well, let's instead say that we're going to create a new date time offset and we're going to specify that we're in central daylight time. I can do that. And now, now in central time where it's time span offset five hours, right? We're minus five hours in central daylight time, like you'd find in Chicago, St. Louis and Austin, Texas. Now it shows that it's actually midnight UTC time when game night takes place. So this is a way for you to specify not so much the time zone, but the offset for the locale where you're taking place with that time zone offset. Okay. So there's a bit we can do then to start calculating what's the actual time in other time zones. So I can specify, well, what about, what about in uh, the FLE standard time zone, right? The Eastern European time zone. Um, I can go find that time zone by the ID FLE standard time. And that's typically used for Finland, Lithuania, and Estonia. And we can convert, we can say time zone info, convert the time for game night offset to the Eastern European time and show me what, show me what that is. And you can see it actually comes up to midnight for my game night offset. Okay. So continuing to look at this, then your system's time zones may be different. Now on windows, you're going to see things like Eastern standard time, FLE standard time, central European time, that very spelled out time zone name in other systems like Linux based systems, Apple, you're going to see a different type of time zone indication that, that's spelled out with a different name. You might see things like New York or California used in those time zone indicators. You can get a list of the time zones that are available on your system by using this command, time zone info, get system time zones. And when I run this, it'll show me the first couple of time zones that are available in the names of those time zones. So if I open up the Alaskan time zone here, you see this is Alaskan standard time, and it shows me the display and the offset here from UTC time. Okay. Use that on your system and it's going to show you something different if you're not on Windows. All right. Now, we specified that minus five hours previously, and, and I kind of skipped ahead into this topic. Time spans. A time span is, is a duration of time. It's actually used to specify the time of day because it's an offset from midnight, right? It's a duration since midnight, and that's the time of day. 
So if I take my game night and say, well, tell me the time of day for that, and it shows me 1900, 19 hours, zero minutes, zero seconds. And I can specify my game duration is two hours and display that and it gives me zero two hours, zero minutes, zero seconds. And it'll even let me specify days, hours, minutes, seconds when I create a new time span like here, where I say time span 14 days, zero hours, zero minutes, zero seconds, and display that and it shows me 14 dot, zero hours, zero minutes, zero seconds. All right, that's interesting, but we can make this a little more human readable with syntax like this, where we can say time span from days or time span from hours, and it very easily shows our human eyes that we're allocating five days, or we're allocating five hours. So when I execute that, I didn't put a display in there, but it would show me those appropriate times. Now, now that we know how to work with durations using time spans, points in time using date time and date time offset, most folks want to be able to do some arithmetic. How long is it until this event takes place? Uh, you know what? This is going to take two hours. What time is it going to be when this is done? So we can say our game night ending time is game night add time span from hours three. And we can also say how long is it until game night by taking now and subtracting that from game night. So it's showing me here that game night ends at 10 p.m. because I said three hours and it starts at 7 p.m. And it's going to be 101 days, 5 hours, 27 minutes, and you can calculate the rest and you can see exactly when I recorded this video if you work that backwards. All right. We covered a lot with dates and times and time zones and date time offset. You should now be able to specify points in time very accurately if you need to do things like scheduling and also record dates and times for things that, that don't really have a time zone and that it's appropriate to know a relative hour, minute, and seconds from when things occur. And now we know how to do a little bit of arithmetic to calculate durations and how long it is until something occurs, and so on and so forth. Thank you so much for watching this episode of C Sharp in the Cards. Do me a favor, click that subscribe button just below. Click the bell so you get notified when our next episode comes out. We're going to try and get two more episodes out in the, in the week ahead. I hope you tune in. And check out our website, csharpinthecards.com, for all the samples, the notebooks, so you can follow along and try it out. Thanks so much.